Ryan, and we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We're here to talk about everything in terms of the world of professional wrestling, all the action inside and outside of the ring, backstage curtain drama. We talk about superstar news, inactive statuses, uh, updates, as well as injury um, injury updates as well. We talk about you know storylines, potential bookings for WWE Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, Collision, Every wrestling show there is. I'm just kidding. No, so, no, but some of them, you know, obviously I only have five segments in an hour, you know, to talk about all the wrestling and stuff like that would be like a, you know, like a marathon of a podcasting, which I'm not opposed up against, you know, would definitely have to, you know, bring at least like a, you know, 24 pack of water, you know, maybe perhaps some food, some fruits, some vegetables. I'm just kidding. No, you know, if you got to go for like a marathon, you know what I mean? Uh, but um, overall, thank you so much for tuning into the show. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about right quick. We had our AEW Dynamite review. We also had our uh, you know TNA Ring of Honor Honor Club previews for the tonight's episodes. We also talked about uh, Karrion Cross is featuring WWE, uh, maybe potential storylines you know with him and uh, you know his comments of uh, you know him um, in an interview talking about him potentially going back to WWE NXT. So without further ado, we're going to talk about our next subject. We have Tom Aspinall. You know, he's um, um, he's a UFC World Heavyweight Champion. You know, it's kind of weird. They, they in, you know, online they say he's an interim. He's an interim UFC Heavyweight Champion. I don't know what makes somebody an interim uh, Heavyweight Champion. Like, uh, you know, I'm I'm I do dabble on the UFC once in a while. I wish I could watch more of it, but their pay per views are so expensive. Like, it's crazy. Like it's insane. Like sometimes I think I went to one UFC fight. I think it was out of Buffalo Wild Wings, and then you just—I don't know—you just see a whole bunch of people. Like, uh, it was you know, obviously people get together at B Dubs and to watch football, and it's so cool. It's so awesome. I think it's because they know, you know, what's going on. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of fans of the UFC, you know, I you see people like break noses and act like they break bones and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm just I'm just your friendly neighborhood WWE fan. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes it could be a little much. You know, you see these guys like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, oh, my God. Like, dude, he's he's done, man. He's done. And the referee has to, like, come and run and push him off and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It's um, it's cool. You know, I, you know, people get excited. Oh, my God. People get excited. People get absolutely nuts when they see a the UFC flag. You know, I went to a actually you no, know, I went to a party once, a UFC watch party. So it's twice I went to like UFC events, and you know you had those guys that were like, okay, you know this is exactly how you get out of this submission hold. You know, there's always that one guy who knows how to be a better fighter than the people being portrayed inside the octagon. There's always that one guy. Also, there's always that one guy who like practices moves on you, you know, and usually he has that like drunk girlfriend in the corner. Be like, oh my God, babe, you could have totally been a UFC fighter. Like, you know what I mean? There's always that person, you know, um, and I'm just kidding. No, I'm not dogging on, you know, UFC fans or anything like that, you know, but although for the longest time, UFC fans uh, before their uh, partnership with, you know, TK, with TKO, they all, you know, used to love calling WWE, oh, you watch that fake stuff, man. And I'm like, dude, like, do you know what these guys actually go through? So, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, a lot of uh, back and forth banter, but see, that's what a podcast is all about, you know, talking about stuff, you know, send me in the chat, maybe how you feel, how the UFC matches up with the WWE, maybe you've had, a, you know, some prior, uh, you know, UFC watch party, you know, experiences that kind of went south like mine, I'm just kidding, no, uh, overall, all right, so let's talk about the UFC champion Tom Aspinall in WWE, got a, a chat from my man, Logan James, uh, I've, I have a hard choice, who is top three, Julia, my uh, Mayuma, man, that'd be amazing if I knew how to um, pronounce that. Uh, I will do. It's just uh, Julia. You know, Julia. From what I saw with her match with Roxanne Perez, she's very gifted. Um, she does kind of have a hard time speaking in promos because I feel like she doesn't really know the language that well, which shouldn't, you know, ultimately like be a burden on her the perception of wrestling fans in her career and stuff like that. Absolutely not a thousand and ten percent. That's bad. Uh, but um, you know, I would love, you know, as soon as this podcast ends, I'm gonna look up um a Um I I'm assuming that's New Japan Professional Wrestling or Stardom. Uh, would it be interesting to kind of find out, you know, how she, you know, um, her presence inside the squared circle. So I'm going, I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to make sure I Google that. 
But uh, ultimately, I do feel like Julia is doing great inside uh, NXT. You know, this run in with her and Stephanie Vacura of the CMLL is uh, it's just fantastic. It's just, uh, you know, it's just amazing how NXT is going so global so quick. You know, recently they were they just found out they were going to be, you know, on the CW kind of replacing, um, you know, the CW saw, you know, um, kind of the NWA seemed like they were kind of faltering. They 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 do have episodes on their X channel, but I I think there was some some controversy between the National Wrestling Alliance and a, and a spot or a, a, you know a spot they did where one of the wrestlers actually went out in the crowd and was doing illegal substances with the fans, and it was shown on the CW. And uh, you know I think after that the CW was like you know what no thank you we don't want any part of that. Like, um, you know, I get you can run the creativity and I get you can run your own wrestling promotion however you want, Billy Corgan. But uh, that's just a, you know, that's just a no-no. And obviously AEW loves to push the lines as well, you know, in terms of that as well. Like that plastic back spot, the syringe and Swerve Strickland's mouth in that uh, steel cage match with uh, Hangman Adam Page at AEW All In. Uh, so, but, you know, but I don't know. I, I feel like once when the CW called it quits with uh, the NWA, um, you know, and the way that this uh, NXT is right now is it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's great. It feels like it fits, you know, it feels like more of a CW kind of wrestling promotion as well. So, uh, you know, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into this. So um, this guy jumped into the wrestling ring at a, a WWE live event. Uh, Cody Rhodes and Gunther were obviously having a showdown. Uh, he's in Manchester, England. He came in. He actually, you know, the England native, um, you know, from the UFC, obviously TKO, the parent company for both the UFC and the WWE. Gunther even broke kayfabe, shook his hand. It was like, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Congratulations on all your success. And then he even said, uh, Cody made the best man win. Like, you know what I mean? Um, for me, it'd be awesome if you kind of left it at that. I don't really want to see WWE drive more of a wedge between Gunther and Cody Rhodes. I would love to see these guys still have, uh, you know, potential storylines on both Raw and SmackDown. Because if you think about it, there's no really obligation to kind of have these guys have promos where they just, you know, beat the crap out of each other, you know, um, or they're, you know, they're very vocal about their, um, you know, their fight and stuff like that. Like, there's no need for that. There's no need for that because the titles aren't on the line. So it's not a big deal. But if, yeah, of course, there's the WWE Crown Jewel Championship. Like, I get it. Like, it's cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia or Jeddah, you know, like I keep, you know, kind of like my philosophy in terms of professional wrestling. You really don't see like any big badass title change happening you know uh across seas you know even like bash at berlin or like the you know backlash in france or uh you know uh, uh, clash at the castle like you don't really see any like big i feel like when in terms of wwe they do obviously it's smart business you have the big four pay-per-views survivor series Royal rumble um wrestlemania and um SummerSlam, where it's like, okay, now we can kind of have these world heavyweight titles, you know, kind of change hands if uh, if it absolutely needed to be. But um, you don't need to turn these guys against each other so crazy. You know, much like I kind of alluded to with Kevin Owens going heel, attacking Cody Rhodes, and now, uh, you know, uh, now he's attacking Randy Orton, which I honestly disagree with. I felt like he still should have been Randy's friend. I felt like he, Randy, you know, could have maintained that person in the middle. It was like, you know what, you guys, you know, keep doing your thing, keep fighting each other, but, you know, just leave me out of it. And uh, I don't think Kevin Owens needed to go that heel. And he went so far off the deep end. Like, I, don't, I, I was kind of disappointed about the attack on Randy Orton. But, uh, you know, I trust Triple H, Paul Levesque, and his creative uh, capabilities and his, uh, you know, his smart brain. Hopefully it's not, you know, something that, you know, bites him in the arse later on in terms of, you know, creative booking and stuff like that. Because so far, his since he took over for, you know, WWE as CEO, you know, it's been great. You know, he's been doing great. But um, I don't know. It's, um, you know, I, I feel like it was a little bit too much. I don't want to see these guys go down the same route. Uh, then uh, next, Espinal uh, had a great reaction from the crowd inside the squared circle. The fans loved him. Obviously, he was in his hometown as well. Uh, he re he revealed to an MMA journalist that he wishes to eventually make a way his way into the WWE once when he's done with the MMA. He said this, and I quote, uh, when I have retired from MMA, 
I'm uh, switching over to WWE. I'm going to be a world heavyweight champion. So this guy has plans already in the mix. This guy has an amazing UFC record of 15 and three with 11 knockouts. This guy's a complete and utter badass. Uh, WWE would be absolutely lucky to have him. You know what I mean? I feel like it'd be an amazing uh, acquisition from you know um, you know from a, from a number of MMA superstars that made their way to the WWE. You know, you had Ronda Rousey, which was great. You know, definitely one of the most prolific signings in WWE history. She was well known in the MMA community. I think she only lost twice. But she lost back to back where she got like absolutely beat it down. And, uh, you know, which kind of forced her to be, I think she was getting concussions or something like that. And it just wasn't, she didn't feel the same. So it was like, you know what? I'm going to, you know, going to hop over to uh, WWE. Now that the fact that WWE and UFC are under the same TKO umbrella, like it's a little ironic that, um, you know, I feel like uh, the UFC stars would absolutely love to go to WWE. I can name a handful of guys like, you know, who used to fight. Like I used to be highly more into UFC, like during the, you know, the Matt Hughes, Forrest Griffin, you know, BJ Penn. That was kind of like when Brock Lesnar was around there as well. You know, um, uh, the spider Anderson Silva was pretty badass. Rampage Johnson as well. He was super cool. And, uh, you know, I was uh, like, the, in my opinion, kind of like the, Kind of like the glory days of UFC when they started becoming, you know, super dang popular. Uh, so, uh, you know, a little bit mainstream. So I thought that was, you know, pretty badass. That was pretty cool. Uh, obviously, Ronda Rousey, Ken Shamrock, Shayna Baszler, Matt Riddle, Lola Vice, Alberto Del Rio, Josh Barnett, and also, uh, you know, Tom Lawler were people who also cross over from being an MMA star, an MMA fighter, to professional wrestling and you know, uh, all of them did have their storylines. They all had their, you know, their, uh, you know, their success. You still see Tom Lawler right now, probably, um, you know, because uh, this guy was fighting in Ring of Honor. I think he even did some work in New Japan Professional Wrestling, which was pretty badass. Matt Riddle, from what I've heard from Matt Riddle, uh, you know, president of a uh, of UFC, kind of wanted him out. You know, didn't like the way he was, uh, you know, kind of mouthing off and stuff like that. So maybe WWE kind of did a few, uh, kind of did them a favor there. Uh, Ken Shamrock, obviously, back before UFC was like an actual like an actual thing yeah you know, cage fighting and stuff like that you had ken shamrock of course it once when it hit the um, once when it officially i feel like once when cage fighting started uh you know started becoming really popular and uh uh it hit the world by storm everybody loved uh ufc everybody still does love the ufc how they pay you know all that money for that paper it's crazy and of course like you know prolific stars who helped um you know like kind of like you know kind of like conor mcgregor i feel like conor mcgregor would be an amazing wwe star because he has that you know that promo you know he's willing to cut good promos i feel like that'd be pretty badass but um would love to see him in wwe that would be pretty badass to see that uh you, you know that irish badass inside the squared circle but you know Definitely would think WWE would be absolutely ecstatic if after Tom Espinal calls it quits from the from UFC and MMA fighting, you know, he makes his way into a career in professional wrestling. And, uh, you know, that'd be I, I, I would love it. I feel like that'd be great. All right, guys, do not go anywhere. We got our fifth and final segment. We got Steph D. Lander, uh, TNA Knockouts, who recently had neck fusion surgery. Going to just, you know, briefly talk about it real quick, rapidly running out of time. We're going to talk about a couple of our other wrestlers back in the past who had, um, you know, neck injuries as well. So grab your favorite snack, grab your favorite ice cold beverage to join me here in about like 25 seconds. <laughs> 